So we just saw a theorem where if you had a symmetric continuous elliptic bilinear form, then uh, the energy functional J V equals one half of A V V minus F V could be minimized over K non-empty closed convex set and the minimizer satisfies A of u v minus u greater or equal to f of v minus u for every uh, v in k. So, A is continuous symmetric h elliptic. So, we will now try to get rid of the symmetry hypothesis. So, that is not needed, but then of course, the price we pay is we will not get this variational characterization as we call it. We will only get a solution of these inequalities, which is itself a useful thing to have. So, okay. So, this is the theorem of Stampakia. <coughs> so, let H be a real Hilbert space and let K contained in H a non-empty closed convex set. Let A from H cross H to R be a continuous and H elliptic bilinear form. let f belong to h, then there exists a unique u in k such that for every v in k you have a of u v minus u is greater or equal to f v minus u. Okay, so this is the theorem. So, we do not need um, the symmetry, but the price we pay is that this is not a solution of some minimization of the energy. So, let W in H be fixed. Okay. And then V going to A W V is a continuous linear functional. Okay. So, by Rees there exists a w in h such that a w v equals a of w v for every v in h ok. So, this is the uh, thing. So, by the bilinearity, so by, so bilinear, bilinearity implies a is linear. Continuity implies norm of A w is less than equal to m times norm w and also you have A w w is greater than alpha times norm w square. Okay. So, we get these properties immediately from the continuity and the by so ellipticity. Okay. So, a is a uh, bounded linear operator. So, A belongs to L of H that is it is a bounded linear operator on H. Okay. So, now we can write A of u v minus u greater or equal to f of v minus u is the same as saying A u v minus u is greater or equal to f of v minus u for every v in k for every v in k. So, we can write this equivalently as saying, so let rho be greater than 0 to be chosen. So, this is same as saying that rho f minus rho a u plus u minus u v minus u 
less than or equal to 0 for every v in k. But this resembles something which we know. So, you have something here minus u, v minus u less than or equal to uh, for every less than or equal to 0 for every v in k. That is, we have that the projection on k of rho f minus rho a u plus u equals u. So, we are thus looking for a fixed point of f from h to h where f of v is given by projection to the k of rho f minus rho a u plus u. Okay, so and obviously the projection because it is a projection on k, it will the range is in k, so any fixed point is going to be in k itself. Okay, so now let v and w, so when you the first fixed point theorem which we like to see we, whether we can apply is the contraction mapping theorem. So, we are trying to see if we can apply like that. So, norm of f v minus f w. So, is p k of rho f minus rho a u plus v uh, rho a v plus v minus p k of so norm of p k of rho f minus rho a v plus v minus p k of rho f minus rho a v plus uh, w plus w. But norm of p k of u 1 minus u 2 is the equal to norm u 1 minus u 2. So, when we take the difference you get uh, this gets subtracted out and therefore, you will get that uh, norm of v minus w minus rho a of v minus w. So, norm of f v minus f w square is less than equal to norm of v minus w square minus 2 rho a v minus w v minus w plus rho square uh, norm of a of v minus w square. So, now that is less than or equal to I am going to write everything in terms of norm v minus w square. So, this will give me 1. The last one norm of a of anything is less than m times that vector and therefore, you have that plus rho square m square into norm v minus w square. Now, rho of a v w v minus w is greater or equal to alpha times v minus w square and therefore, from that since we are having a minus sign here minus 2 rho alpha times norm b. So, you can now choose 0 less than rho less than 2 alpha by m square and so this part will become negative and therefore, you have 1 minus 2 rho alpha plus rho square m square will be strictly less than 1 ok and therefore, f is a contraction implies there exists a unique fixed point u in k and that is a point which we are looking for and that completes the proof of the theorem ok. So, if k equals v a closed subspace of h then obviously convex uh, non empty Anyway, it is non empty because 0 is always there. So, it is a closed, uh, so I do not have to say that, yeah, closed subset, it is obviously convex and non empty. So, if w belongs to v, then uh, w plus u also belongs to v, ok. So, you can, you can substitute that. So, a u v minus u is greatly equal to f of v minus u and that will give you a u w. So, call this as v and therefore, a u w greater equal to f of w. Also true for minus w. Therefore, from this you get a of u w 
equals f of w for every w in v. Also, alpha times norm u square equals a of u u equals f u less than equal to norm f times norm u and therefore norm u is less than equal to 1 over alpha times norm f and therefore the mapping u going to uh, sorry f going to u is a bounded linear operator h2 so we have actually proved so thus we have proved Okay, so this this implies, so let call me, let us call this double star, double star implies that f going to uh, u is linear, okay, because of the bilinearity of a and the inner product, so this implies that this is linear and therefore you have this bounded linear operator. That is why I have proved the following theorem. So, this is a very important theorem which we will use again and again. So, this is called the Lax Milgram Lemma H Hilbert, real Hilbert space V contained in H closed subspace. A continuous and uh, H elliptic bilinear form F in H, then there exists unique U in V such that A of U V U W equals f w for every w in v. In particular, this is true if v is h itself okay, and the map g which takes g of f equal to u is a bounded linear map. of h uh, into v and norm g f is as equal to 1 over alpha times norm f. In addition, if a is symmetric, then u is the minimizer over v of the functional j v equals one half a v v minus f v. Okay. So, this is the lax theorem. So, remarks one you take a u v is the inner product itself. Okay. So, so if you have v contained in h closed subspace, so g of uh, any f g f of v equals f v for every v in uh, v and this is called g from h to v is the orthogonal projection. Two. So, let us take v equal to h and then you are saying that a continuous elliptic 
implies there exists unique u such that a u v equals f v for every v in h okay uh, in any case and f f in h given okay so this is the infinite dimension dimensional analog of the fact that any uh, positive definite matrix is invertible. Because in finite dimensions on 2 equals 1 1 and so you have a unique solution. So this is uh, it tells you that the matrix is invertible. Here you are saying the, so the A u equal to f is the linear system. So that is the same as saying A u v equals f v for every v in h. Okay. So the this is how uh, you relate the two. Okay. Now if uh, 3 by Ries representation theorem we can replace f v in j uh, in uh, in all the theorems by f acting on v uh, the duality product h star h where f is in h star that is a continuous linear functional on h. Why I am saying this is that we may not as I we studied in the Sobolev spaces we have various Sobolev spaces which we are dealing with and we always said we will only identify L2 with its dual but we will keep the duals of H1 0 as H minus 1 and so on. So we want we won't always have that Fv but we will have in fact the uh, a duality bracket namely F is in the F, F is a continuous linear function in fact by the representation theorem this can be written as F tilde V inner product for some F tilde. So it does not matter what we are doing this. For A symmetric implies so solution U is a minimizer of J, but in the general case you do not have there, there does not exist energy for there does not exist a J which is minimized, but A U V minus U greater or equal to f of v minus u for every v in k this is called variational inequality ok. So, this is an example of what we call a variational inequality. So, our next aim is to see several examples of this situation and then connect it with various boundary value problems.